Hello, my name is Joe Randall Andrew. Um, I'm a 71 year old fella living in Montgomery, Alabama. I'm originally from Geneva, Alabama, which is about oh two hours southwest of Montgomery, down close to Dothan, Alabama. Uh, I was not born there. I was born at Fraser Ellis Hospital in Dothan, Alabama, on August the 16th, 1947. Uh, my parents lived in Geneva. My dad and my grandfather ran a variety of businesses from um, an automobile repair shop to Chrysler Plymouth DeSoto distributorship, uh, General Motors franchise, they owned a the standard oil plant there and the international harvester business there. And um, <clears throat> there were four in my immediate family. There was my mother and father, James Pierce Andrew Sen uh, Jr. and my mother Jean M. Andrew, my brother James M. Andrew, Jimmy Andrew, um, and we lived at uh, 211 East Campbell Avenue in Geneva, Alabama. Uh, my brother and I both went to Geneva High School. There's a lot of pride uh, that we associate with Geneva. Um, uh, I recently watched a movie called The Stars in My Crown, and in the narration of it, there's a, a, a short blurb there where the guy says that I was always a boy in this particular town. Well, that's me. I'm always a boy in Geneva. Every time I think about myself there, I think about myself at 18 or younger, 17 or younger. Um, but anyway, let me back up a little bit in time and take you back to uh, England. Uh, that's where my uh, 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 one of my grandfathers began. He's the one that uh, migrated to the United States um, um, he was born in 1643, and they left uh, somewhere in around 1666, somewhere in there. The only thing I remember is from my readings is that they were uh, on the second iteration of pilgrims to come to this country. Uh, they came through Plymouth. They settled in a place called Farmington, Connecticut. I've been there. I've seen the original site where the home was, and it was a cabin. It was very unusual that these folks that own the home now developed that cabin on the back side of this house and turned it into their kitchen. It was very nice. My brother and I went there a few years ago. Um, he had a son, Junior, uh, John Andrew Jr., um, he actually got a land grant in South Carolina, and our family gradually started moving their uh, self south. Um, we moved into South Carolina, North Carolina, and um, Georgia. Georgia at that time was still uh, a French colony. Um, but what's very interesting here is is that I, our, our our ancestor, uh, the one that uh, I entered the Sons of the American Revolution on, his name is Benjamin Andrew. Benjamin uh, was our most famous Andrew. Uh, he was a legislator in the state of Georgia. He was, uh, um, he was a rich guy. Uh, he um, had a rice plantation in and around Midway, Georgia, um, owned two homes. Um, a summer and a winter home. Um, he was, by being a son of liberty and living in that part of the world at that point in time, was awfully dangerous. Um, he was labeled uh, a traitor to the crown, so to speak. So they put out a warrant on his name. Now, uh, in our day, we call them wants and warrants, or we call them uh, wanted dead or alive, that's basically what this was. They wanted him dead or alive. Well, he was a delegate from the state of Georgia to the first Continental Congress. He was not able to get to the Continental Congress because he was running from the Redcoats. And not just the Redcoats, he'd run one way from the Redcoats and then run into the Muscogee Indians in another location. So he didn't get to go to the Congress to sign the Declaration of Independence. But our family does have a record 
of uh, his appointment to, as a delegate and the requirement for him to be there to sign. You got to understand at this point in time, this was done in Philadelphia. And all of these folks from South Carolina, North Carolina, and everywhere else, they had to come to Philadelphia to sign this document. Well, it was probably pretty hard for everybody, not just because of weather and roads and uh, the dangers of the red coats and uh, things of that nature, because we're now moving towards uh, a, a revolutionary war in a few years. Um, but anyway, he was our most famous Andrew. Um, and he lived uh, around Midway, Georgia. Now, uh, and was one of my ancestors. The balance of my ancestors seemed to locate themselves in and around what is now called, and I always forget the name of the town when I need it, uh, but it's in jo Elberton, Georgia. And my brother and I went there, and we found a lot of our family that it was in our history that we had been studying buried in front of a church there called uh, Stinchcombe Methodist Church. And there are many of the Andrew family buried there. And here's an interesting thought for those of you thinking about today and the way we marry today. Um, not only did we find first cousins married together, uh, we found um, 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 second and third cousins marrying each other. Uh, but that was the way it was. I mean, uh, there was a limited amount of ladies in the area, and, and same thing with men. Um, but anyway, we found that to be very interesting when we uh, found that location. One of the things that we had been unable to do was to unearth, let me rephrase that term, to find my great-grandfather, whose name was James Asbury Andrew. We'd looked for him for several years. Nobody had found him on none of my cousins in the ancestry chain, me, my brother, or anyone. Well, I pick up Jim at his house, and we ride up to uh, Elberton. And um, I can't pull the name of that town out right now, but that's uh, where my grandfather grew up as a boy um, to a very young age when he left home. But anyway... Um, his father, I know this from him telling me this, was kicked in the head by a mule and died in their livery stable in this town. And um, I'd always wanted to find him and know more about him. Well, um, we went to the first cemetery that we went to. Jim and I were walking around looking for him and we could not find him. He was not in the what would have been the family plot uh he wasn't in the city plot uh, back then families were buried together and if you didn't have a family in this community you were buried in what they called a city plot but i walked by a marker that said jones well that clicked because my grandfather's mother was a jones so i went out there and i looked through those uh, markers and the second marker I came to was my great grand was my great great grandfather James Asbury Andrew it's on the the marker it's uh, uh, he has an obelisk that's over his grave and not only did we find him we found an uncle that we never knew about as far as I knew uncle Cole was the only uncle I had from uh, of, of, from my dad's family. Um, but uh, we found another uncle at this location. Well, now I've got my uncle found and I'm able to complete the chain of my ancestry. Now, I started working on this ancestry probably 20 years ago. Uh, the computer has helped. Um, uh, I have a friend by the name of Jay Kelly who helped me do some study he, he went to some libraries and, uh, that I couldn't get to, and he found out some other information, and that helped us guide, guide us to the rest of the, the family. Then a fellow here in town by the name of Mr. Stevenson was responsible for putting my ancestry together to correlate it to meet the requirement of the Sons of the American Revolution. Um, so 
That having been said, uh, my grandfather was the first automobile mechanic uh, that was hired in Pelham, Georgia by the Pelham department store to work on what cars there were in that community at that point in time. Well, a guy that sold glasses came through there and he offered my grandfather a job riding with him and just keeping his car up. Well, he gave him room and board and supposed to be paying him. Well, my grandfather got in the car with him and left my grandmother in Pelham with my father, who was a newborn baby, in Pelham, Georgia. Well, they get to a town in, in Alabama by the name of Geneva. Now we've gone full circle.